Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you're watching this video, I wanna say welcome to my YouTube channel. I appreciate you stopping by. If you don't mind, do me a big favor. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that thumbs up button as soon as you start watching this video or you come into the live stream. Do me an important favor, hit that like button for me. Also, if you're stopping by the channel for the first time and you want to, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'm here every single day providing this financial content to help you get to where? Your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So if you appreciate that, consider subscribing. Also, if you don't mind, share the video. Share this video with whoever is in your network, whoever you believe may need some financial freedom nuggets. I do provide financial freedom golden nuggets. So please, if you don't mind, share the content. If you want up to 15 free stocks. Moomoo is going to give you up to 15 free stocks when you open a new Moomoo brokerage account. They're going to give you up to 15 free stocks for just trying out their brokerage app. When you put $100 in your brokerage account, they're going to give you five free stocks. When you put $1,000 in your brokerage account, they're going to give you 15 free stocks. There's a link down in the description box of this video. Go click on that Moomoo link. Go open up your new Moomoo account today. Go get that free stock. Go get that free money. Guys, we got a lot to unpack today. And when I say urgent, I'm talking about really, really, really urgent. Millions of Americans cannot afford to pay for the basic things they need to live. And we're going to unpack the reasons why. And then obviously, like I do on this channel, I'm going to give you guys solutions. I don't just bring problems to you. I bring solutions. So we're going to unpack some solutions as well. So hang in there with me while we go through this information. I was looking at an article from Wells Fargo, and it was a Wells Fargo money study where they basically went out and talked to a bunch of people across the United States about their money because they wanted to figure out what is the state of of the American consumer when it comes to their finances. We're in this great economy, or at least... They want us to think we're in this great economy, 3% GDP in 2023. And a lot of economists believe it'll be even better in 2024. Now, if that's the case, why in the world are Americans struggling to buy the basic things they need to live if we're in this boom economy? You guys know I've been talking about these two economies we have here in the United States. We got two economies. You got a boom economy and you got a bust economy. And we're going to talk about them. But let's dive into some of these statistics from this Wells Fargo money study. 56% of Americans, guys, are worried about their finances. You're talking about Half of all Americans, we got 350 million people in this country, guys. Half of the adults are worried about their money. To me, that is very, very shocking since everybody's saying we're in this boom economy. Why would you be worried about your money if we're in a boom economy, right? We're going to unpack that and we're going to talk about it. The article also went on to say people are more worried because after they spend on their needs, they don't have any extra money left for niceties. See, 
That's one of the problems we have in this country. We think we should always be able to spend on needs. Now, you got a choice, guys. You certainly can spend on needs, but you're going to pay the price for it at some point in your life. Needs are necessary things. Wants are not necessary things to live. And that's where a lot of Americans get confused. And that is evident in this study that Wells Fargo did. People are worried about, well, yeah, okay, you know, I can, I can once I get, get my needs out of the way, I, I have no money left for my wants. Guys, here's the deal. You got to choose. You got to choose. In this economy that we're living in right now today, you got to choose. You got to choose between wants or financial freedom. That's your choice. You got to take care of the needs, but these wants are going to keep you from financial freedom. And that's why 56% of people in America are worried about their finances. See, three years ago, right, 2021, when we had $2 trillion worth of personal savings, interest rates were low. Nobody was worried about finances. Why? Because they had a lot of personal savings. Plus, they had access to borrow money cheaply because interest rates were low. Fast forward three years later, guess what? <laughs> you got basically no personal savings. Interest rates are through the roof. Now people are starting to panic because they don't have any personal savings and they can't go borrow money. Now they're boxed in. They're boxed in. Their behavior with money is already bad. They got high interest rate credit card debt. They got high interest rate loan debt, student loans, no personal savings, extremely high interest rates. Only thing they have is their salaries or their wages. And that is starting to panic people. 56% of people in this particular study, half of Americans are concerned about their finances. But then when they interviewed people who were what they call affluent, what I call wealthy, the one percenters, guess what? Totally opposite. These people are not worried about anything financially. They're living their lives. They're still buying homes. They're buying investments. Not a care in the world. Now, how in the world can the one percent not have a care in the world but the people down here in the 99% in this bust economy who are worried about their finances are struggling. The main difference, guys, is what? Assets. See, the people who are struggling with their finances, they don't have no assets. And when you take away their personal savings and you take away their ability to borrow money cheaply, they panic. They're starting to look at, oh my goodness, all I got is my salary. And this thing ain't enough. I can basically afford the basic things I need to live. And I have no extras. I have no money for extras. They're panicking. But then when they did the study and they talked to these affluent people, no, we're doing great. We're buying assets. If we want to buy a home, we go buy it. We're not worried about the economy. The economy is great. It's booming. Because, see, they're participating in the boom economy. 56% of Americans are not participating in the boom economy, right? They also did something that I thought was pretty interesting. They asked people, they said, hey, how many hours a week, how many hours a week do you spend on your finances? You know, tracking the money that's coming in, you know, tracking the money that's going out. How many hours a week do you spend on that? Three hours. That was the answer. Three hours a week people spend on their finances. But they also asked them one other question. How many hours do you spend on social media? That was the second question they asked them. And guess what the answer was? Nine hours. So you mean to tell me you're concerned about not being able to afford the basic things you need to live, but you spend three hours trying to fix that 
but you spend nine hours on social media. See, do you see the disconnect here, guys? We are a country of people who want to be entertained. We just want to be entertained. We don't want to be educated, not when it comes to our finances. We want to bury our head in the sand when it comes to our finances and, and just hope for the best. But yet and still, we'll get on social media for nine hours a week, strolling in somebody else's business, loving somebody else's lifestyle, fighting battles we shouldn't be fighting when it comes to politics and all this other stuff. But yet and still over here, we spend three measly hours a week <laughs> working on our finances. And we wonder why we're living down here in this bust economy. We wonder why we're living paycheck to paycheck. We wonder why we don't have an emergency fund. We wonder why we are in high interest rate credit card debt. The reason is, is because we spend nine hours a week in somebody else's business and three hours a week in our own business. That's why. That's why. Very, 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 very sad. People are struggling, guys. They are struggling because they just have the wrong behavior with money. Americans are at a point where they can't even afford the basic things they need to live. What's this notion of extras? See, here's the thing about us. We feel like we are entitled to something when it comes to extras or, or what I like to call wants. Guys, you have a choice, like I said earlier. You, you, you can have all the wants right now and not put money away for your retirement, not put money away for your golden years, not build an emergency fund. Don't stay out of consumer debt. You, 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 can, you can have all the wants, but you're going to give up something. You're going to give up something. We're only spending three hours a week working on our finances, but we're spending nine hours a week in somebody else's business on social media. Right? Lusting after someone else's life. Fighting battles with people online for people that don't even know us. Guys, we got we to gotta break out of this. We got to break out of this as a country. It's going to going to get worse. I keep telling y'all this will only get worse. The wealth gap is going to continue to widen. It's going to get bigger between the haves and the have nots. The boom economy, bust economy. Most of us are living in this bust economy. That's why you see statistics like this. 25% of people surveyed in this Wells Fargo money study said they're in poor financial shape. 25%, guys. Like I said, guys, we only got 350 million people in this country. 25% of people surveyed said they were in poor financial condition. 40% said they were in good shape, good financial condition. And then 58% said, they live within their means. I'm not sure if I agree with that one, that 58% of people live within their means. I don't, I don't agree with that one. I definitely don't agree with that one. Here's the biggest thing, though. This is, this is something else that I thought was real interesting. When they spoke with people and people said the pressure, the financial pressure is on them so bad that they're starting to lie about how much money they spend. They're starting to actually lie to people about the value of their home. That's how much pressure is on them. That's how much financial pressure they're feeling that now Americans are lying about the money they spend and they're lying about the value of their home. They're ashamed. They're embarrassed. It also went on to say that people are embarrassed about their credit card debt, so they lie about it. They're embarrassed to tell their friends or their family or their coworkers that they got all this high interest rate credit card debt, that they're barely keeping their head above water. Guys, all of this can be corrected, but you got to have some basic fundamental things that you live by. 
It's, you're just not gonna wake up one day and change. You have to make an, a, a concerted effort to change the way you think about money or you will continue to be trapped in this cycle. Boom economy, bust economy. Consumer, investor. I keep telling you guys, that's what we gotta deal with here. These people are dealing with being a consumer and all they do is go out and do what? Buy liabilities and build up debt. The numbers are right here. 25% of them, 25% of people surveyed say they're in poor financial condition. Poor financial condition. Poor financial condition. People have gotten to the point where they're so embarrassed about their financial situation, they're starting to lie about it. They are so embarrassed, so ashamed that they're lying about it. But yet and still, we got this boom economy, 3% GDP, billionaires are cashing out billions and billions of dollars worth of profits from stock trades. But then again, we got these people down here, 25% of Americans who are in poor financial condition, can't even afford the basic things they need to live. No retirement savings, no, no emergency fund, living paycheck to paycheck. High interest rate credit card debt. Then got so bad that they're just lying about their financial condition. They're too embarrassed to tell people the truth. That's a shame, guys. This is a state of emergency in this country when it comes to our finances. A state of emergency. But here's the thing, though. 1% don't care. That's where they want you. They want you exactly the way these people are being portrayed in this article. They want you in the matrix. They're going to keep you there. See, this is the matrix. This is what I've been talking to you guys about over these last couple of weeks in these live streams I've been doing. This is the matrix. I, when I saw that article from Wells Fargo, I said, perfect. This is what I've been telling my folks for two weeks. Let me go ahead and give them these numbers because this is the matrix. See, the matrix has you so discombobulated financially that you're embarrassed to tell people truly what type of financial condition you're in. You're embarrassed, but they want you to be embarrassed because as long as you're embarrassed, you won't look for help. You won't seek out help. They don't want you to get help. They want you in the matrix. They want to keep you in the matrix. This is the matrix. 25% of people, poor financial condition, matrix. I spend three hours on my finances, but I spend nine hours on social media, matrix. They want you on social media 15, 20, 30 hours a week. They want you on social media every single second. You can be on social media. They want you on there. Why? That's how they get you. That's how they keep you in the matrix. They want you glorifying and edifying and, and, and lusting after someone else's life. Why? Why do they want you to do that? So, so you don't worry about your own life. See, they want you to live your life through somebody else's life. They don't want you to go out and live your own life to the fullest. Oh, the affluent Americans... They're very optimistic about the economy. That's what the survey said. When they interviewed affluent Americans, basically the one percenters, when they say affluent, that's a cold word for one percent, right? When they say affluent, that's just wealthy. <laughs> that's what the word, that's what it means. When they interviewed them, dumb people didn't have a care in the world. No, no problem. What a great economy we have. Yes, we're traveling buying private jets, jet setting around the world, buying homes. No, we don't worry about no interest rates. Nope, we go ahead and buy them and we'll put tenants in them when we're not, when we're not living in them so we can get income off of them. Yeah, we're doing great. Very optimistic about our economy. 1% very optimistic. 99% not very optimistic. Struggling. You tell me what's going on here. What is the problem here? What is the problem? Why do we have two economies? What's the purpose of that? 
The purpose is to keep you exactly how people feel in this article. Financially discombobulated, ashamed, lying about your financial condition because you're ashamed. You're embarrassed about it. Right? In a lot of, and also what they talked about in this article was how people from a stress level, just from a stress level, they're feeling more and more stressed financially. And they mentioned high interest rates, right? They mentioned high interest rates. And the reason interest rates are so important to people that are struggling financially is because they can't get access to money. They can't get access to any more credit. That's how most of these folks were doing well when interest rates were low, when they had personal savings. So you got to understand when the pandemic broke out and the federal government started pumping all this money into our financial system. Guys, they, 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 they pumped in trillions and trillions of dollars. I think it was like three or four or five trillion dollars they pumped in. They pumped all of this free money in and people took it, right? They took it. Personal savings went to $2 trillion. The problem was when you give people a bunch of money and they don't have the right behavior with money, what do they do with it? They blow it. If I got a dollar and I got bad behavior with, with money at a dollar and then you turn around and give me $100,000, Guess what I'm going to do with that 100000 The same thing I would do with the dollar because I have no behavior with money. My behavior with money is raggedy. So when they pumped all of this money into our financial system and all of these people who had the wrong behavior with money got that money, what did they do with it? For a period of time, they saved it. And then all of a sudden, when the propaganda machine came on and said, hey, country's reopened. You guys get back out there and start spending. Guess what they did? Exactly what the propaganda machine told them. And now, three years later, they're in this financial condition. Interest rates rapid, interest rates sky high. They have no access to borrow money. They got no personal savings. The only thing saving us, and I've told you guys this time and time again, the only thing saving the average American right now is the labor market. That's the only thing saving these folks the average American is the labor market. That's it. If that labor market slips and unemployment goes up, guys, we're going to be in trouble in this country. We're going to be in trouble. If we lose our wages, because, uh, uh, see, you got to understand, guys, we got nowhere else to turn. You got no personal savings. It's gone. You have no access to money from a borrowing standpoint because interest rates too high. So no savings, you can't borrow any money, all you have is your wages. And if those wages go down, or if you lose your job, how are you going to take care of yourself? You're not going to even be able to get the basic things you need to live. Uh, live. That's why I'm telling you Americans are terrified because of that. That's the financial situation we're in, in this country right now. That's the financial situation we're in in this country. Boom economy, bust economy. Consumer, investor. How do I work myself from being a consumer where all I do is go out and acquire liabilities and debt to transition myself into an investor where I go out and acquire assets that build wealth? How do I do that? The number one thing you got to do is you got to stop spending so much time on social media. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Stop spending so much time being a consumer. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't get on social media, but you watch five, six, seven, eight, ten hours of soap operas every day. You watch seven, eight, nine, ten hours of television every day. It ain't just social media guys on your phone. It's that television. Yeah. Yeah, it's all that. It's all these other activities you're doing that don't produce no income. All these other activities you do that Americans do that don't produce no income, don't produce no assets. You got to change. You got to shift. 
You got to shift the way you're doing things, guys. We spend too much time being a consumer and not enough time being a producer slash investor. So if you want to change something in your life, you got to change your habits. You got to change the things you do in your everyday. You got to sit down and write down everything you do in a 24 hour period. That's what I would start with. Because I know a lot of people, I don't get on social media. I don't even use social media. Guys, social media is just one way that you waste time. People waste time in many other ways other than social media. That's why I'm telling you, sit yourself down and write down everything you do in a day. Even when you're at work. Because there's another study out there that already says most people when they're at work, they spend more time on social media than they do working. Scrolling their phone. They spend more time scrolling their phone than they do working. So, okay, you're at work. That don't mean you're trying to get your mental right. The only way you get yourself out of this situation right here that we find ourselves in is you got to change your mental. I don't care if somebody gives you $100,000, you'll blow it. Why? Because your mental is backwards. Your mental is not right. That's the reason we have these statistics that, that I'm sharing with you today is people, their, their financial mental ain't right. 25% of people are in poor financial condition. Why? They're just spending their money on the wrong things. We don't have a job problem in this country right now. It, it may be in the future, but right now we don't have a job problem. We don't have a wage problem. We don't have a job problem or a wage problem. We got a spending problem in this country. We have a spending problem. And that's evident based on this this, this research, or this, this survey, this study that Wells Fargo did, this Wells Fargo money study. It's evident we have a spending problem in this country. And then all of a sudden we want to be ashamed about it. Oh, I don't want to tell anybody that I'm living paycheck to paycheck. I don't want to tell anybody I can't afford my car payment. I don't want to tell anybody I can't afford this home payment. I don't want to tell anybody. Why wouldn't you want to tell somebody? You need some help. You need to get your, mind, your, your mental right. And that's what my channel is all about, is helping people get their mental right. You got to get this mental right. God, I don't care how many side hustles you try to get. I don't care how much money you make. It's what you keep is what matters. And then multiply it. That's what matters. I don't care if you make, oh, I make $250,000 a year. So how much of it do you keep and multiply? That's what I want to know. So that's where the rubber meets the road is what do you keep and multiply? Clearly in this Wells Fargo money study, many of y'all ain't doing that based on this study. You're talking about 25% of Americans in poor financial condition, man. That's millions and millions and millions and millions of people, guys. It's like 70 million people. I mean, that's crazy. That's crazy. 50% of Americans are worried about their financial condition. 56% of people surveyed are worried about their financial condition. Why? Can't borrow no money. Interest rates too high. Can't borrow no money. Ain't got no personal savings. All they got is the salary. And what's happening is the salary ain't enough. The salary's not enough. Wages over the last decade, let's say, let's say decade, went up 15% wages. But everything else you pay for went up 200% in that decade. That's the problem, guys. See, your wages alone ain't going to get it. Not for most of y'all. Because you ain't going to make enough. You're going to make enough. When you talk about Social Security taxes, Medic I think it's Medicare taxes, and then you talk about federal taxes, when, it's, when all that's taken out, plus all the other deductions that you have, your net is not enough. It's not enough when you got to pay a mortgage, you got to pay car payments, and most of y'all got two car payments if you're in a, you know, a relationship and you got more than one person that live in the house, you probably got two car payments, plus you got the house payment, plus you got the student loans if you went to college, plus you got the credit card debt, right? 
So it's a struggle, man, just on your wages. Why? Because you got to change this. Again, you got to sit down, write down everything you do in a day. 24 hour period. Here's what I do in that 24 hours. And be honest with yourself. So if you be honest with yourself about that, then you can you don't have to lie to people about your financial situation. I'm just telling you what the article said. I'm not calling anybody a liar on this on, on this video. I'm just telling you what the article said. People are lying about their financial condition because they're embarrassed. They're lying. They don't want to tell people what the real value of their home is or that they got an equity credit line that they tapped into and it didn't blow all the equity in the house because they're buying crap that they didn't need to make the 1% wealthy. So they don't want to tell people that truth. They don't want to tell people how they got high interest rate credit card debt that's just financially choking them. They don't want to tell people that. They don't want to tell people that, that they're behind on the mortgage payment. One million mortgages in the United States are 60 days past due. Matter of fact, there's 1.1 million mortgages. 1.1 million mortgages in the United States are 60 days past due. That's a problem, guys. That's a problem. And it's going to continue to escalate. It's going to continue to escalate. And the reason it's going to continue to escalate is because people have the wrong behavior with money. See, it's not a money problem right now, even though that's what it says, Wells Fargo money study. It's not a money problem. It's a spending problem we have in this country. It's a spending problem because we have a robust labor market. The labor market is still great. People can get a job. So, 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 it, so it's, not, it's, not, it's not being able to get income. It's what we do with that income is, is our real problem in this country. Because, see, we think we owe ourselves luxury items and niceties and extras and wants. It's right here in the article. Oh, oh I'm, I'm feeling depressed and bad because after I pay my, my basic bills, I don't have anything left over anymore so I can go treat myself. I can't go to Shake Shack and you know, indulge myself in an in a extra large shake. See, this is the stuff we, we, we got it backwards. No, you don't get no niceties until you get to the end of the rainbow. And you got your pot of gold sitting there. Then go get all your wants. That's the problem we have in this country. We think we get everything we want up front at the start. You don't. You get it at the end, guys. See, and, and these people, these affluent people, AKA one percenters that they interview, that's why they don't have these problems because they understand that. They understand it's assets first. Assets first. I buy assets first. And then my assets at some point are large enough to generate enough income to pay for my wants. Not at the beginning. But see, what y'all want to do is y'all want to take, not y'all, let me take that back. What Americans want to do is they want to take their wages, right? And they want to be able to borrow money to buy all this stuff that they want. But they can't borrow money no more. Too expensive. Or they got bad credit. Or they're highly leveraged. Most people, debt to income ratios can't afford it. They can't afford it. They're highly leveraged. They're living on more than what they make. No one is going to borrow or lend you money when you're living on more than what you make. So that, you put a big X on that, can't borrow money, got no personal savings, so it's just your wages. And the problem is your wages are not going to go that far. Your wages are not going to go that far because you've not learned how to manage your wages. You've not learned how to delay gratification with your wages. All of this right here is about instant gratification. Oh, I'm not feeling good. I'm financially stressed because I can't do some extra things that I want to do anymore. No, what you're really saying is I've maxed out my credit cards. I've spent all my personal savings. I, got, I can't get access to loans. That's how you were supporting all that extra stuff three years ago. You weren't supporting it on your wages. You were supporting it through your savings, through your credit cards, and through going out getting loans. That's how he was supporting all your extras. Since they have taken all of that from you, 
Now all you have are your wages and you can't buy anything because your wages don't cover your normal expenses. That's why people are freaking out and panicking because their wages don't cover their basic expenses anymore. Why? Because your basic expenses have went up faster in, in price than your wages. Your wages went up about 15% over the last decade. But guess what? Everything you buy with those wages went up 200%. See? That's what I'm telling you. All these people buying these houses, too much house, big old mortgage payments, million people behind on, on mortgage payments right now. And y'all might think, oh, that ain't that much. It's 84 million mortgages in the, in, the, in, the, in the United States. One million ain't that much. It's just a start, guys. I'm telling you, it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Fed going to keep interest rates higher for longer. What if the Fed don't reduce this year? What do you think going to happen to the market, uh, 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 to this bust economy down here if the Fed don't reduce interest rates? I can tell you what's going to happen to the boom economy. Nothing. These people are going to keep buying assets. They're going to keep buying assets. But down here in this bust economy, stuff going to get rough. It's going to get worse, especially if the labor market starts to soften. If that labor market starts to soften and unemployment starts to go up, you better be worried, guys. I'm telling you right now, sit down right now and right size yourself. Sit down right now and have a financial checkup from the neck up, which means your filter system. Sit down and write down all the stuff that you do in a day. And you got to start being honest with yourself. See, a lot of us don't want to be honest with ourselves. We even want to lie to ourselves or rationalize. Well, you know, <sighs> mm -mm. you got to be honest with yourself, guys. This is the only way you're going to get out of this financial mess. Number one thing you got to do is sit down and figure out what are you doing with your time? Am I being a consumer all day and not a producer slash investor? What I need to do is transition from being a consumer to a investor. I, that mentality wise, mental wise, reprogramming my filter system from being a consumer, reprogram it and become an investor. See, because what, when you become an investor, what do you do with your money? Number one, when you become an investor, you're going to shed yourself of all this materialistic crap you don't need. That's number one. The light bulb going to come on and you're going to say, well, golly, I got all this crap in the garage. I got all this crap in the attic. I got all this crap in my house. I got these expensive cars. I got this expensive house. And I'm stressed. I'm not feeling well. I'm lying to my family about my financial condition. Why am I doing all of that? To impress who? Once you change the way you think, you'll understand, no, get rid of all that crap. I have no one to impress. What I need to be working on is getting to my freedom, building assets so I can be free. Forget the materialistic stuff. Let me sell it all. See, that's what you'll do. You'll sell it all. I was in that position. I was in that position. And I gave up all that stuff. I just gave it up and focused on building wealth. I focused on paying myself first. Every time I got a paycheck, I paid myself first. But the only way I was able to do that is I had to have a real conversation with myself. I had to get myself mentally in a space where the things that I buy don't define who I am. Once I got to a space where I understood that, it was easy for me to give up all that crap. So I went from being a consumer where all I was doing was buying liabilities and creating more debt for myself. I transitioned from that to a investor who paid himself first through investing in assets that build wealth. And then I ain't gotta lie about my financial condition to my family or my friends. I ain't gotta be embarrassed about having credit card debt because I ain't got no credit card debt. I ain't gotta be embarrassed about my financial situation because I got all this consumer debt because I ain't got no consumer debt. I ain't got to worry about a job because I got assets that generate income. And if this job want to act a fool, I can leave and depend on my assets until I find me something else to do if I want to continue working. But that's choices in my life. You need choices in your life. These affluent people or these one percenters that this Wells Fargo money study talked to, they got choices in their life. 
They got freedom in their life. They got more time in their life. These other folks that they talk to, this 50% of people who are worried about their finances, they're programming. They got to reprogram themselves. But most people ain't going to listen to that because most people have been taught by the 1% since birth. This is who you are. This is who you should be. You're doing well. You deserve all the niceties up front. You deserve all the special treatment up front. You, don't, you shouldn't have to work that hard. You should be able to surf social media and enjoy yourself and enjoy your favorite athlete and your favorite entertainer and your favorite singer and your favorite uh, uh, whatever y'all look at on social media, right? Because again, we're, we're a nation of want to be entertained, not educated. We want to be entertained. We want to lose ourselves in someone else's life. Because why? We ain't brave enough to concentrate on our own life. Right? That's what it is, guys. That's the truth. That's the evidence. You All you need is to go look at that Wells Fargo money, uh, money study article. Go, go look it up on, um, on uh, Google. Go look it up and read it for yourself. See, I know what's happening because I've been doing this for a long time, guys. I've been telling y'all this for weeks about the matrix. I've been telling y'all about this matrix for weeks. Proof is in the pudding right here. This is the matrix that I'm walking you through today. They are laying out the matrix. Instead of these people saying, you know something? It's my fault. I'm going to own up to it. But you know something? I'm going to reprogram myself. I'm not going to worry about wants. Because see, wants is a trick of the 1%. They want me to feel like I deserve something right now when I've not done any work for nothing. See, that's it. I've not done the financial work, but I still want the reward. Don't work that way, guys. <laughs> I'm telling you, it don't work that way. There is no financial reward until you do the work. That's how it is in this country. That's how it is in this country. You get no reward without any work. Put in the work, you get the reward. But most people don't want to put in the work. Most people want to live right here in this space and wait for interest rates to come down to save them. That's what they're going to do. Most people are not going to do anything. They're not going to change the way they think. What they're going to do is they're going to wait and cross their fingers that the Fed start reducing these rates and make borrowing money cheap again. Make borrowing money to the point where they can go buy a car cheap again. Make borrowing money cheap again so they can go buy a home that they really don't need that doesn't produce no income. That's what most people are going to do. They're going to bury their head in the sand and continue to feel the way they feel until interest rates come down. And then, aha, OK, we got rates back down to three or four percent. Now I can go out here and leverage myself again. I'm going to pay off all this high interest rate credit card debt with new zero balance credit card. You know, that's the trick, right? People tell me that all the time. Well, you know what I can do? I can get the zero balance. I'm mean, like, guys, you do understand you're just kicking the can down the road, right? You ain't got no damn money to pay it off right now. Just because you go get a zero balance credit card and give you 12 months with no interest, where you gonna get the pay it? Where you gonna get the money to pay it off in 12 months? You got no money now. So you're just kicking the can down the road for another 12 months. If that's what you want to do, fine. But it don't catch up to you to catch up to you. At some point, it catches up to you. Can't kick the can down the road. Credit done started to deteriorate. Nobody won't give you a zero interest credit card offer no more. Then what you gonna do? Then what you gonna do when that 22% interest rate hits you from this credit card? Guys, I'm telling you, you better change your spending habits. It's a spending problem, not a money-making problem for most people. It's a spending problem. You gotta, you gotta change the way you spend. Clearly, in this article, that's what's happening. This whole notion of 58% of people live within their means, I doubt that. I doubt that. Mm -mm, there's no way. No way. Can I believe, 20, I think even 25% of people who are in poor financial, can, I, that's even worse. That's even higher, in my opinion. In my opinion, that's higher. That's higher. That's higher, in my opinion. It's just, it's just, it's just for me, I can, I can see the writing on the wall. 
I can see exactly what's happening because I've been doing this for a lot of years and working with clients and working with people in my banking days for 25 years in banking, both on the retail and the commercial side. And then especially over this last four years doing the YouTube channel where I've been having these one-on-one -on -one calls with people. Um, I see it every day, guys. I see it every day. So when I read articles like this, it, it's no surprise to me. And, and they use terms like um, autopilot. People, you, you know, they loved it when they were on autopilot. You know what autopilot means? When I had access to cheap credit, cheap debt, I had savings. I could just do whatever I wanted to do, live my life, splurge, go out, have all the wants. See, that's autopilot. That's the code word for, hey, I can borrow money cheap. I had savings. Plus, I had my wages. Then I could be on autopilot because I didn't have to worry about my finances at that point because I had three buckets to choose from. I could choose from my savings if I wanted to splurge. I could choose from my salary or my wages, or I could go out and borrow money dirt cheap. When I had those three buckets to, to get money from, I had autopilot. I was on autopilot. I didn't have a care in the world. I wasn't struggling. I was doing great. No, you were struggling the whole time. You were struggling the whole time. You just didn't know it. Now you know it. You were struggling the whole time. Because if you're right here borrowing money to live your basic life, if you're using credit cards to support your basic life, your basic necessities, you're struggling and you don't even know it. You won't know it until you know it. Some of us never realize that. Some of us never get to the point where we realize we've been struggling our whole life financially until we get to the end. And then all of a sudden the light bulb come on. I get people email me all the time and I'm not picking on anybody, but I have people email me all the time. I'm 60 years old, Richard. I'm 65 years old, Richard. I'm 70 years old. And I want to try to figure out a way to build some wealth. And all I can think to myself is, and I do my best to help them, but all I can think to myself is, what have you been doing all of these years? What do people do all of these years when they're making money? What are they doing with it? What in the world are you doing with your money? I don't want to hear this crap about, oh, ain't no jobs. Plenty of jobs out there, man. Plenty of jobs. See, I keep telling y'all, it's not an income issue. It is a spending issue in this country. We are a country of spenders, not savers, not investors, a country of spenders. That's our problem here. We got the greatest country in the world, the greatest financial system in the world, the greatest economy in the world, but yet and still, pound for pound, we have more people in financial trouble than a lot of our other world counterparts. We do, because we're a land of spenders. We're a land of consumers. We're a land of entertain me. I want to lose myself. Let me go look at Brad Pitt, everything he does and support him and, and all this other stuff. Let me go look at this lady over here. Let me go look at this politician over here. Let me do everything I can. Hey, I can't even save for my own retirement, but I'm going to give this candidate $1,000 so we can get him in the White House. That's how we are. We will go get somebody. We will chase someone else's dreams <laughs> and help them realize their own dreams before we'll realize our own. That is crazy to me. That is absolutely bonkers to me. Crazy. But that's why we're in the financial trouble we're in in this country. Whether you want to believe it or not, we are. This article backs that up for me. It backs it up. It backs it up. We are in troubled times, guys, financially. The question is, the question is, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about your life, your financial condition? See, we can't save everybody because everybody don't want to be saved. Some people will say, oh, this guy's stupid. He's crazy. Most people don't want to be saved. But for you few who want to be saved financially, who want to change your behavior, who want to reprogram yourself, let me give you the blueprint. First thing you got to do, like I said, guys, is you got to sit down. And you got to really be honest with yourself. 
And you got to take account for what you do in your day. See, the, the problem is, is we spend too much time being a consumer. So you have to erase that. You have to start tracking your day and saying to yourself, everything that I do in this day should be leading me towards becoming what? An investor. I got to get myself out the matrix because right now you're in the matrix. All of these people in this article, except the ones that they talk about the affluent people or the 1%, AKA the 1%, everybody else in the matrix. They in the matrix because you can hear the words they're saying. The trigger words are, I want to be on autopilot. You don't get to autopilot till you earn autopilot, guys. Nobody going to give you autopilot. You autopilot when you build wealth, when you have assets that generate income. This when you get to autopilot. Ain't nobody going to give you no autopilot in the beginning because you, oh, I spent all my savings and I, I want to be autopilot. I'm stressed. No, you stress because you spend too much. That's why you stress. If you want to know the truth, you stress because you spend too much. You spend money you don't have. That's why you're stressed. You want to unstress yourself. Stop spending money that you don't have. Sell all of this crap. So sit down. Step one, sit down 24 hours. What do I do with my 24 hours? And be honest with yourself. I guarantee you most of us, a big part of our 24 hours is going to be catered towards what? Indulging ourselves in some type of consumerism, whether it be buying crap we don't need, Spending time watching TV shows we don't need to be watching, uh, supporting other people's lifestyle who don't know us, don't care anything about us. We're out there supporting their lifestyle, shaking the pom poms for them, being their biggest cheerleader. Oh, I got on. I like everything you do. That kind of crap. Cut all that out. Put all that attention on your life. That starts with that. Okay. So let's take an inventory of what we're doing with our time, because the goal is to become a investor, not a consumer, right? So let's take an inventory of what we're doing. Anything that we're doing that's not production and getting us towards being an investor and getting to wealth, we cut out. Well, I love going in my garden and, and, and that's my downtime. Listen, man, you can go in your garden and spend five hours out there not being productive from a financial standpoint and be broke. Now, if that's happiness for you, perfect. Stay doing it. But for those of us that say, you know something, Richard, you're right. I'm spending too much time on social media. I'm spending too much time watching TV. I'm spending too much time doing stuff that don't produce no income. I need to cut that stuff out. I need to get some income in my life. Boom. There go five hours. Boom. You just, got, you just freed up five hours that now you can start transitioning that five hours into what? Production. Production. Production, assets, assets, assets. Okay, great. I got five hours I've, I've found that I've just been given to the 1%. I've found these five hours. What do I do with these five hours? Okay, next step is I look at my income. Now, I got five hours over here. I'm going to keep those five hours. We're going to do some with those five hours. But now, let's focus on our income. Let's focus on our income and let's focus on our expenses. So that's the second exercise you're going to do. First exercise is I need to find some hours that I'm giving to the 1% that I'm giving to causes that don't ain't going to put no money in my pocket, but take money out of my pocket. Give me them five hours back. Then the second exercise I'm going to do, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to look at my income. I'm going to write down all the income I got coming in and all the income that I got going out. Here's the goal. If it ain't essential to life, I don't do it anymore. I don't spend any more money on it. No more going out to eat. No more getting your hair done. No more getting your nails done. No more buying excess clothes. No excess traveling. No spending money on crazy cars and houses and all this crap that you can't afford. Right? That's the second exercise. No wants. Gotta be needs. Go to the grocery store, buy your food. No restaurants. No restaurants. If you want to radically change something in your life, you got to radically change something in your life. If you want to radically change something in your life, you have to radically change something in your life. Ain't nothing in this life free. You're going to give up something. So be prepared. When you sit down, you better be prepared to give up something. Don't fool yourself. See, these people in here fooling themselves, some of them. 
Oh, I'm so stressed because I can't buy some of the things that I used to buy, some of the extras. <laughs> Guys, that's a whole, that's a, that's a, you're in the matrix. You're in this alternate universe over here. It's a matrix where the 1% got you trapped thinking you deserve something that you haven't worked for. That's the matrix. So we sit down and we do this budget. Income coming in, what's going out? Cut out all of the ones, every single one of them. If you got streaming services, cut them off. So if I'm spending $100 a month on Apple TV, well, Prime, uh, HBO Max, whatever the heck you're spending it on, turn it off. Turn it off. Because what we're looking for now is ways to instantly create money we can start investing in assets. Right? So if I can, so if I can find $500, I've already got five hours that I'm going to turn into production. I got me five hours because I'm going to stop messing with social media. I'm going to stop fooling around at work. I'm going to stop fooling around when I get at home. I'm going to cut all that crap out. So I got five hours. Now I've, I've saved $100, $200, $300, $500 from my expenses. Step one, step two, now step three. Investing. That's step three, right? And step three is investing. Some of y'all might say, why? Well, I got a lot of debt, Richard. What, what can I do? Oh, I'm glad you asked that. I'm glad you asked about the debt. The debt's not going to be paid off from our salary. The debt's going to be paid off from these five hours you got over here because you're going to get out here and get a side hustle with these five hours. Yeah, remember those five hours you were around here surfing the web and in other people's business and fighting battles that don't belong to you? Fight your own battles. Stop fighting somebody else's battles. They don't need you to fight their battles. You fight your own financial battles in your own life. Those five hours. You're going to take those five hours and you're going to get a side hustle. You're going to take that side hustle money and you're going to start paying off this high interest rate credit card debt. You're going to, you're going to start paying off any of these, any debt you got over here that's high interest rate. Oh, I got a car loan. I need. No, you ain't paying off no car loan debt. You need to sell that car. Sell it. The only thing you're going to take the five hours to pay off is high interest rate credit card debt. The rest of that crap you got, sell it. Sell the liability and pay the debt off. And then if you got a shortfall, take the five hours, the side hustle money to cover the shortfall. But you're not going to be, oh, I got a three hundred, I got a five hundred dollar a month car payment I can't afford. Maybe the side hustle money can pay it off. No, sell the car. If you want to change something in your life, then change something. Period. Either you want to change or you don't. The plan you're on right now is a plan to financial destruction. You want to stay on that plan? Stay on it. If you want to change that plan, you got to radically change something in your life, guys. You got to give up something right now. Sell the car. Sell it. Well, how am I going to get to work? I don't know. Public transportation, bicycle, moped. I, it doesn't matter. Get there. People do it every day. People around the world get to work every day not in an automobile. They get their own public transportation. They get their own foot. They get there on a bicycle, they get there on a little moped, they get there on a little motor, whatever. You don't necessarily need a car. Guys, if you want to radically change something in your life, you got to radically change something. If it was easy, everybody would be at freedom. So you're going to take those five hours, you're going to pay off that high interest rate credit card debt, you're going to take that five hours, you're going to pay off any shortfall on any loans that you still owe that you sold the, 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 the liability. Okay, got a car. I owe five more than what it's worth. I'm going to take these five hours. I'm going to get that $5,000. I'm going to throw it with that car. I'm going to give it back to the bank. Here, or I'm going to sell the car, take the cash, pay off the bank, and I'm done with the car. And I won't get back into a car till I can afford to get back into one. Or... If I have the cash from the five hours where I'm going to be side hustling, then I go buy me a little buy here, pay here. Get me from A to B. $2,500 car, $3,000 car. Get me from A to B. Or I just stick with public transportation. Or I walk. Guys, we're the only country in the world who everybody got to have a car. No other countries like that. Go around the world. Go to Europe. Go to Africa. Go to these 
other countries, guys. We're the only country where everybody in the family got to have a car. Everywhere we go, we got to be in a car. It, it, listen, guys, I'm just telling you, if you want to change something radical and change your life and change your filter system, you got to do something radical. You just do. So step one, free up five hours or more. We got it, guys, especially of those of us who are the article just told you guys, people spending nine hours a week on social media alone. That ain't when they get home and plop themselves in front of the TV with a bag of Doritos and a mellow yellow. That ain't including that time. That ain't including that time. I mean, you got nine hours on social media alone. Then you probably got another five hours on TV. Come on now. Y'all know we got the time. So get your five hours. Take that five hours Create some side hustles. Well, what do you mean? What, what kind of side hustle can I create? Plenty of them out there. Guess what? If you want to change something, go do the research. Go to Google. Type in. Side hustles. Top, top 10 side hustles. Top 10 side hustles from home. Top 10 side hustles if I don't have a car. I mean, whatever. Go to Google. Research it. No one's going to spoon feed you everything you need to know about this process, guys. You got to go out and learn something on your own. Yeah, you got to learn something. Yes, you do. So if you got five hours, you got 10 hours, create you some side hustles. I got plenty of videos on my YouTube channel about how to do that. So if you're interested, go to my YouTube channel, search for side hustle videos. They'll pop up and watch them. Go to work. That's all you got to do, right? So we're going to free up five, 10, 15 hours a week for side hustles. That's step one. Step two is, is we're going to create a budget that we're going to live on. It's going to be our financial Bible. We're going to live on that budget, right? Financial Bible. Don't nothing leave out that, high, that household from an income standpoint unless it's a need. No wants. We're going to cut out every want. That includes streaming services, all of your pampering services, all of your indulgence services, all of that stuff cut off. If you want to change something radical, you got to change something radical, baby. No one's going to give it to you. If you want to change something radical in your financial life, you got to change something radical in your financial life. It's up to you. Or you can stay in the position you're in right now. That's your choice. You got two choices. Stay where you're at right now and you'll be in financial bondage for the rest of your life. Or you can radically change something right now and get to freedom. Over here is bondage. That's the matrix. In the matrix, you're in financial bondage. Over here... As an investor, right, you're in financial freedom. So you got bondage or you got freedom. It's your choice. It's up to you. Most of these people right here are in bondage. And they will continue to be in bondage in the matrix for the rest of their life, for the rest of their working life. They will be in the matrix. They choose to be in the matrix. They choose not to reprogram their filter system. They choose to be in the matrix. How many of you will choose not to be in the matrix. I've just walked you through the matrix. Does it sound familiar to some of y'all? If what I'm telling you in this article sounds familiar, you're in the matrix. You're in the matrix, I'm telling you. And it's a matrix that they've created for you guys. They've created the matrix so that they can manipulate you in order to continue growing their wealth. Right here in the article, oh, I'm feeling stressed because I can't go by wants. I can't have any extras. What the, what are you talking about? You do know those wants and those extras are the 1%. You see what I'm saying? So step one, free up some time for side hustles. Step two, create the budget, cut out all the wants, free up some cash. Step three, get this high interest rate credit card debt paid off. Also part of step three is you're going to sell everything that has a loan on it that you can't afford. Now, if you got a house, you can afford it. You're fine with that. Keep it. I, I'm OK with that. But these cars or if you really have a house where you just can't pay for it, the mortgage payment is, is, is not allowing you to free up anything. Guys, that's something you got to sell. You got to get rid of that house.
If you got a mortgage payment that's taking so much of your take home income, I'm talking about if you got a mortgage pay payment that's taking 30 or 40% of your take home income to satisfy that mortgage payment, including taxes and insurance, you got to sell that guys. You'll never be able to invest. Not to the magnitude you're going to need to invest in order to get to wealth. So you got to, you got to consider that you do. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you my advice, my opinion. If you want to right size yourself and get you on the right track so you can get yourself out of this bust economy and participate in this boom economy, you can take yourself from a consumer and living in the matrix mentally, mentally living in the matrix to over here being in freedom, true freedom, where you got assets and wealth. You got to do something drastic. So step one, <clears throat> we're going to free up that time. Step two, we're going to live on a plan, which is that personal budget, right? We're going to cut out all the wants. Only thing in that budget is needs. We're going to free up some cash. We're going to create cash in step one through side hustles because we're going to give up social media. We're going to give up watching TV. We're going to give up anything that we're doing that doesn't produce income. So guess what I got left? I got work because it produces income. I got my family time. I got my spiritual time. And then I got what? Side hustles. Ain't no more. I'm going out with the guys and play 18 holes of golf. None of that. Because that ain't going to put a dime in your pocket. That's going to keep you in the matrix. Oh, yeah, I'm getting ready to go out here and um, ride horses. And, oh, that makes me feel better. That ain't going to put no money in your pocket. Put that on hold for a little bit. Them horses will be fine. You'll get back to them later on. But for now, them horses, they're not going to produce no money for you. Unless you're out there riding them in competition and making money or selling horses and doing that kind of thing. You got a farm and you're making money. That's great. But if you ain't making no money off of any of this stuff you do in your leisure time, guys, if you're not making any money off of it, give it up for a short period of time. Or it's going to keep you in the matrix. It's going to keep you in the matrix. So create some 5, 10, 15 hours a week to create more income. Live on the budget. Cre create a budget so that you're only paying for needs, not wants. Free up some cash. Step three, we're going to look at our debts. If it's high interest rate credit card debt, I'm going to take this money from this five, 10 or 15 hours worth of side hustle I've created, pay off that credit card debt quickly. If I got a car loan that, that I'm upside down in, I'm going to take some of this side hustle money, cover that shortfall, sell that car, pay off that car loan. If I got a house and my net income that I got coming in every month is 30 to 40% of my net income is going towards that house, I may have too much house. I may need to downsize. I may need to sell it and just rent. I don't know, guys. It's your financial freedom. You don't want to give up anything? Stay in the matrix. It's pretty simple to me. You ain't got but two choices. Stay in the matrix or come over here to freedom. Those are your two choices. There ain't no in-between choice. There is no straddle in the fence choice because that's what most of us want to do. I want to straddle the fence. I want one leg on this side of the fence. Well, I'm just giving the 1% everything they need. I want one leg on this side. Well, I'm trying to get the freedom. No, you either get the freedom or you stay in the matrix, period. Ain't no straddle in the fence. Ain't no straddle in the fence. You decide. And then the fourth part of that blueprint that gets yourself out of the matrix blueprint. That's what we're going to call it. And that's what I'm going to talk about on this channel. That get yourself out of the matrix blueprint. Fourth step. Invest. Like a wild man. Like a, like a wild man, you want to invest as much as you can, as often as you can, to catch up and get yourself to freedom. Because step one, two, and three, I've got myself reprogrammed. I got my time back. I'm not taking my time and giving it to the 1% by being a consumer and doing things that don't create no money. So I've got my time back. Now I got to take that time and generate income, secondary income, third dairy income. Step two, now I got to sit down and put a budget together where I got to live on less than what I make. That's step two in the root program, right? That's step two in the get me out of the matrix Blueprint. Step two, reprogram, spend less than what I make. I've told you how to do that. If you want a bowl, 
radical change in your life, you have to make a bold, radical change in your life. So I've given you the blueprint on that, right? Anything that's not a need, get rid of it. Don't rationalize it. Don't make no excuses. Oh, my hair's so short. I can't do it at home. I got to go to a profession. No, don't nobody care how your hair look. Put a wig on. So most of us do anyways, right? Put a wig on. If you're a man, do what I did. When I started losing my hair right here, and I was looking like a little clown with a little patch on the side and nothing right here, cut it all off. Cut it all off. Let it go. Do I care how I look to, to somebody else? No. Why? Because I'm at freedom. <laughs> I'm at freedom. I don't care how I look. You pick at me, say what you want to say. I'm at freedom, though. You still over here in the matrix. You in the matrix. I'm free. So I don't care how I look. See, I come out here ragged a t-shirt that I had about 10 years. Didn't brush my teeth. Did wash my face, but I didn't brush my teeth. I'm drinking coffee. I'm in my dream home. Got every car I want out in the garage. All paid for it. See, I, I, I'm in my dream. I'm, I'm living my American dream. I'm living my financial freedom. Why? Because I paid the price. I got myself out of the matrix at 26 years old. I left the matrix behind. Even right now, guys, I don't watch TV that much. A little bit at night just to kind of calm me down before I go to bed. But I don't watch. T I don't spend all day sitting here watching TV. I spend a lot of my time on social media, but I spend a lot of my time on social media helping people and getting paid, getting, making money. See, I know how to use social media to make money. All I'm telling you guys, if you want to change something radical in your life, change it. I was 26 years old, bad credit, dead broke, no net worth, no job. I've been there. So I don't want to hear none of the stories about bad credit or I ain't got a job. Or, this is the greatest country in America. I mean, the greatest country in the world is America. Whatever you want to do, you can do it. I'm telling you, you can. I don't care what color you are. I don't care what age you are. I don't care what your sexual orientation is. I don't care if you're, you're a felon. Don't matter. If you're willing to pay the price and change the way you think in this country, you can do anything you want to do. That's just the way it is, guys. But it starts with you. It starts with you making that decision. And I've given you how to get out of the matrix blueprint. This invest thing is critical to getting into your wealth. Those three steps, how to get out of matrix blueprint, the first three steps leads you to the fourth step, which is investing. What do I invest in, Richard? You invest in assets that build wealth. What are those assets that build wealth? Real estate for income, paper assets, businesses. Those are the three things you're going to take your money and put it in. I recommend you start with paper assets. Why? Because it's the least expensive to get into. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. You don't have to have a, 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 a solution to solve problems. You just have to have income and be willing to discipline yourself, be consistent, be patient, and you will build a large, a large pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. I got a 10-year wealth building, a wealth transfer blueprint. 10-year. For you guys who are saying, you know, I'm in the matrix. Richard, I need to get out of the matrix. My recommendation is follow those first three steps I just gave you in the get out of the matrix blueprint. And then when you get to step four, then I recommend you take a look at my wealth transfer blueprint for, for, for building wealth. It's all about investing. Those first three steps are all about getting yourself out of the matrix and getting your mindset ready for wealth. See, guys, you got to get yourself ready to accept and receive and build wealth. This has to be ready for that. That's why when people get a windfall of money who have bad behaviors with money, they spend it all. That's why a lot of athletes, football and basketball, a lot of those guys get all of this money, but they have no history of financial literacy. So what do they do? They get it. They mismanage it. They let somebody else mismanage it. They don't have any idea. They let somebody sell them on the notion of you go out and play on the field. We'll manage all the back end. Just give us power of attorney. We'll, we'll take care of all the bills. All along, these people stealing from them, but they don't know it. Why? Got no financial literacy. So all of a sudden they get to the end of their playing days 
and they don't know how the real world work. Because see, now you're not an athlete anymore. No one's going to kiss your butt. No one's going to ask for an autograph unless you're one of the very few who get to the Hall of Fame or have some big old personality out of this world. But, but 95% of those guys, nobody know who you are once you get through playing. They don't know who you are. They don't know you played in the NFL, nor do they care. So now you're in this real world. You, don't know, you still don't know anything about money because you don't let some agent or some financial guy fleece you out of most of it. Now you're sitting here, no skill set. Maybe you got money, maybe no money. Definitely don't know how to make money. Maybe good credit, maybe bad credit. Who knows? Well, Richard, how do you know all of that? Because I was one of those guys. I was one of those guys. I was one of those guys in the NFL for three years and got out and didn't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. I was one of those guys. So I know exactly what a lot of them are headed toward. And the statistics support that. Reason I tell you that is because I don't want you to be a statistic. I don't need you. I don't want you to be a statistic. But if you don't take advantage of this matrix, get out of the matrix blueprint I just walk you through. You better find something to get you out of the matrix, man. Now, once you get over here to the number four, they invest part of it. Then at that point, that's where you want to start buying these assets. And like I said, I recommend starting with paper assets. It's the easiest one to get into. So remember, we freed up this money over here. The two, two areas of money we created in, in the get out of the matrix blueprint. First one was when we took a look at where we were using, spending our time what we were doing with our time as a consumer. We took those five, 10, 15 hours. Remember, we're going to get a side hustle and start making some money with those hours. So that's one part of the money you're going to get to invest. It's from those, those hours you've taken back from being a consumer and now you're a producer. The second tranche of money you're going to get it, it is going to come from you living on less than what you make on your primary salary or your primary income because you're going to go in and eliminate all of the things that don't make any sense. All of the things you're paying for that don't make no money, that are not basic necessities. Yes, I got to have basic shelter. I do need basic transportation. I do need basic things like utilities to be paid, food to go on my stomach, clothes to go on my back, but just basic clothes. Not, you know, Christian Dior. I'm talking about just basic stuff. Not Christian Dior, not Louis Vuitton, not all this other stuff. Basic stuff. Then you're going to save money because you're going to be living on less than what you make. So now you got the side hustle money. You got the living on less than what you make money. And then you're going to take that money and you're going to start putting it in assets. You're going to start putting it in paper assets. And that's how you're going to build wealth. But you're going to need to do it for 10 years. Minimum. 10 years. 10 years. Every single month. Every single year. For 10 years. Three assets that I'm going to be buying over the next 10 years in my wealth transfer blueprint to double my net worth. You can copy that plan. All you got to do, send me an email. Email address down in the description box. I'm not going to go through that in this video because I made plenty of videos on it. The people that rock with me know exactly what that plan is. The people that rock with me. But for those of y'all that ain't rocking with me, you're new. If you want that, those three big boy blue chip paper assets that I'm buying over the next 10 years, every single month through dollar cost averaging that I believe will double my net worth. And why I believe that, send me an email. Go down to the description box. Send me an email and say, hey, Richard, watch your video. I I I'm good with the how to get out of the matrix blueprint. I, I got that. What I want though is that wealth transfer blueprint where you're going to be buying those three assets over the next 10 years that you believe will double your net worth, send me that video. I'm ready to get started. Another key that you're going to have to understand and get comfortable with, guys, is putting this money into a vehicle that then you can go ahead and buy these assets to build wealth. And the vehicle that I use right now is called Moomoo. It's a self-directed brokerage app. I go in from my bank, I transfer money to that brokerage account, and then I buy my paper assets, those three big boy assets that I'm going to share with you when you send me an email. But Moomoo is my brokerage app that I use. Now, you may have a brokerage app, you may not. 
If you have a brokerage app and you're happy with it, use that. But if you don't have a brokerage app or you're unhappy with what you're using or you just simply want to rock with me because that's what I use. And if you got a question, you know, you can always email me or DM me and say, hey, Richard, I'm hung up here. Walk me through how I can do this in the Moomoo app. See, I can help you with that because that's what I use. I can't help you with any other app. You have to call whoever you got the app with. Let them help you. I can't. So if you want to rock with me and you want a really simple and easy way to buy these paper assets to start building wealth, once you get yourself out of this, this matrix, then, like I said, go down to the description box. There's a Moomoo link. Moomoo is going to give you up to 15 free stocks when you sign up. Put $100 in, they're going to give you five stocks. You put $1,000 in your brokerage account, they're going to give you 15 free stocks for just trying out their brokerage app. But you have to make the deposits right away. It's a limited time offer. So if you're working with me or you want to try out a new brokerage app, go down to the description box and click on that Moomoo link. And, um, and then send me an email and say, hey, Richard, I opened my Moomoo. I put money in it. Now I need the blueprint. Now I need that wealth transfer blueprint so I know what to start considering back. Now, I'm not your financial advisor. You can copy my plan or you can create your own plan. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a CFP. I'm not any of that stuff. I'm just a guy who's been investing on my own for 25 years. Self-directed, buying paper assets, buying real estate for income, building businesses, building side hustles for 25 years. I've, been ha I've had this YouTube channel focused on doing that for the last 25 years. I'm sorry, for the last four years, not 25 years, four years. I'd be an old YouTuber if I was doing it for 25 years. But for the last four years, I've been doing the YouTube channel specifically around these, these things that I've done to create wealth, to help other people create wealth. So if you're interested in that, guys, keep rocking with the channel. Keep watching the daily live streams. Keep watching my edited content that I put up later in the afternoons pretty much every day. Sometimes I'll even surprise you guys and do a live stream where I'm doing Q&As like I did last night. I did a wealth transfer blueprint Q&A last night. It was like 9 o'clock Eastern time. And, and I didn't think anybody would be on the call because it was so late. But goodness gracious, you know, four or five hundred of you guys showed up. So that was awesome. That was a, that was a surprise for me. But we had a good time. And I took questions. But normally in my daily morning live streams, I don't take questions. I see the questions popping up here. I see people in here trying to scam people. But I don't say nothing because I've already told y'all, don't listen to nobody in these chats or in the comment section of YouTube videos. I already told y'all that. That's not where you take your investing advice. You don't take your investing advice or, or your financial freedom advice from people in the comment section of my videos. You don't take it from people who get in the chat and put up all kind of crazy, goofy stuff in the chat. Don't take it. And I know, oh, you get a moderator, you can do this. I don't care nothing about no moderators and all that. If you rock with me, you'll know that. So my recommendation is rock with me. And then you'll know when these scoundrels come in the comment section of the videos or these scoundrels try to put their little crazy stuff up on the little, the little window right here. I don't know if y'all can see it or not. I can see it. You may not be able to see it, but they are trying. But see, I don't worry about that because I know the people that rock with me they know better. And y'all that are brand new, now you know better. You never take any, anything from these people in the comment section or on Instagram that slide into your DMs claiming to be me. So just be careful out there, guys. The rule of thumb is never send anybody money to invest for you over the internet, period. No credible investment advisor, no credible CFP, a uh, person with a CFP is going to email you through Instagram or DM or, or try to get you through some YouTube video comment section. That's not how these people operate. Not if they're good at what they do. Most of these people that are good at what they do, they don't have to solicit. People solicit them. Just like me and my business are a financial consulting. I don't solicit people by email to take advantage of my coaching sessions. I don't have to do that. People solicit me. So that's how you know if somebody's worth a grain of salt, right? If they are here trying to track you down, so listen to do beating down your door, I don't know about that person. I'd rather be able to go out myself and find somebody as opposed to somebody trying to find me. You know what I'm saying? So just be careful with that. Again, guys, I'm getting ready to sign off. I appreciate y'all this morning. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday. 
Um, I plan on having a wonderful Sunday. I'm going to put some more content up this afternoon in the form of an edited video. Um, and then I'll be back tomorrow morning with, 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 my, with my, my normal morning live stream. So I appreciate y'all rocking with me. Hopefully you got something out of this. You know, the whole goal here is to get you out of the matrix, get you over here to freedom, right? We want to get you out of financial bondage. We want to get you over here to financial freedom. The only way you move from consumer, right, where you're out getting more debt, getting more liabilities, to transition yourself over here where you're, you're getting more assets and building more wealth, you got to transition out of the matrix. You got to transition from consumer to investor. I've given you the blueprint, the get out of the matrix blueprint. I just gave it to you. So anybody that asked me for, hey, how do I get out of the matrix? I'm going to send them this video. Yeah, I know it's an hour and a half long, but guess what? Have some patience. Get you a pencil and a piece of paper and start writing some of this stuff down. See, that's the problem with a lot of us. We have no patience. We're like 15 second people. If it ain't done it for me in 15 seconds, this whole TikTok world. If it ain't done it for me in 15 seconds, I'm out of here. Why? What else you got to do, do? You ain't built well, so what, what are you doing with your time? So be patient. Have a level of patience, guys. Building wealth, you have to have a level of patience. It doesn't happen overnight. So start developing that level of patience now. Okay? Well, thank you guys. I appreciate you. Like I said, lock it in with a thumbs up before you get out of here if you don't mind. I know a lot of you have been in the chat. You're rocking with me. Lock it in with a thumbs up. That way I know I'm on the right track here with this content. I try to bring y'all content that will get you to think. See, my content is not here to be entertainment to you. My content is here to be educational purposes for you. Take what you need, throw back what you don't need, but do something. It's to get you to think and change the way you think because that's the only way you get out of the matrix. You have to reprogram yourself. And I've given you steps today. See, remember what I told you at the beginning of this live? When I come to a, a video or I come to a live, guys, I'm never just coming with a problem. I'm coming with some solutions. Now, whether you want to follow those solutions, that's on you. But I'm going to always give you guys solutions. You may not like the solution, but I'm always give you a solution. Whether you're going to follow that solution or not is on you, but I'm going to give you one. I'm never going to come to a video or a live stream with only problems and no solutions. I'm a solution guy. Right? I'm a solution guy. And I always have been. And I will continue to be. So continue to rock with me. Lock it in with a thumbs up before you get out of here. I really appreciate you guys rocking with me. Like I said, if you want that Moo Moo offer, it's down in the description box. Get up to 15 free stocks. Use the brokerage app that I use to build wealth. That way, if you got questions, you can ask me through email or you can DM me on Instagram at Richard Fane Millionaire Mentor. Thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. Stay healthy. Get wealthy. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.